So the next talk will be given by Li Jin Tang. Li Jin is a PhD student from the lab. He's finishing his PhD and he's going to present his PhD work. And his main contribution to Bovrec is to, to have provide a catalog of mobile endogenous retroviral element in the cattle genome with a, a panel of essays that could be directly uh, interrogate on the public uh, part of the uh, Eurogenomics area. Yeah, so good morning everyone. So my name is Li Jing. I'm a graduate student in the team of Cajo Chalier. So today I'm going to talk about my PhD work about uh, GWAS reveals determines of mobiliz mobilization rate and dynamics of an active endogenous traverses uh, of cattle. So human and cattle population are characterized by substantial level of genetic polymorphism, which are the substrate of Darwinian selection and causes of disease. So the observed genetic polymorphism reveal the balance between loss of mutation by the process of random drift and the gain of mutation by the process of delivery mutation. So thanks to the lecturing sequencing, now we are able to directly study the process of delivery mutation by sequencing. Sorry, it's very <laughs> indeed. Yeah. yeah, so by sequencing the parents and offspring uh, directly. So the variants present in the offspring, but the absent neither the father nor the mother are de novo. So every baby is born, it carried an order of 15 sleeps and indel. So there are also other type of de novo mutations, including the mobilization of transposome. Uh, half of the typical mammal genome is composed of repetitive elements, of which most of our selfish uh, transposome elements. Most of the transposome elements are not able to move anymore because of raised host sinus mechanism and accumulate accumulation of mutations. However, it's no since microclintoch Barbara, Barbara via mo mobilization of still active mobile elements can generate genetic polymorphism and causes of disease. So we and others identify the mutation causing the autosome recessive colostral deficiency in dairy cattle it results from uh, insertion of ERV element in the fifth exon of upper B gene, generating a long uh, allele of this gene. And the, this insertion, it's seven KB long. It's come from one subfamily called ERVK21 ALTR. So this insertion, it's defective because it cannot encode complete open reading frame. And interestingly, this insertion is dairy cattle specific and can trace back to a common ancestor, suggesting the ERVK might be still active in cattle germline. So to test this hypothesis, we take advantage of the unique resources in the lab, Dimola project. So it's a large multi-generational pedigree. It composed of 715 dairy cattle are fully sequenced. So our colleague, uh, Chad, ha Chad Harlan, developed a pipeline, detect the long reference insertion in these data sets. So we identified more than 1,000 ERV uh, present uh, segregating in the population. Because of the data sets organized in more than 127 trios, extended trios, then we're searching for the variants present in the offspring generation, absent from parents, and can transmit it to the next generation in the Mondelian fashion. So if any, we'd like to quantify as de novo mutation. So in total, we identified five de novo uh, ERV mobilization. So all the five ERV insertion is the same as the one integrated in the Apple B gene. They are all defective. Four of the five events occurred in the germline of the, of the father, one occurred in the germline of the mother. Three of the four paternal events uh, occurred actually from the same sire. Two of the events even occurred in the same sperm. 
So from here, we could conclude that the ERVK, indeed, is still active in bovine germline, both for male and female. We could roughly estimate the mobilization rate in the order of one out of 50, if we include the outlier. And this data set is also suggesting there is a major individual differences in mobilization rate because three out of five due to the events we identified from one sire. So to test this hypothesis, so this observation actually is encouraging us to test the hypothesis if the de novo mobilization rate of ERV it's indeed differences between individual or not. So we need to find another way. Let's say we need to scale up final methods which can directly estimate the mobilization rate in individually. So then we move from dairy cattle to uh, Beijing blue beef cattle. So to that end, we developed the methods which is a capture-based methods can directly measure ERVK mobilization rate in the germline. line. So I don't have time to go through the detail of the methods, but I can give you a number of notable features of these methods. First, it could be applied to any class of active transposome elements. It provides a technique replicates by targeting both five prime and three prime ends. And it can be rendered quantitative using the polymorphic sites inherited from parents as internal control. So we decided first apply these methods in the DNA from sperm to study the mobilization in cattle male germline. So there are two type of ERVK we could capture. One type is red, marking red. It's a de novo ERVK. Another, it's the triangle array. It's polymorphic constitutive ERVK inherited from parents. The number of de novo ERV loci can try and convert it as transposition rate by divided by the estimate number of uh, efficient haplogenome uh, using the uh, polymorphic ERV as an internal control. So we first applied these methods to the DNA of uh, two sperm draw of each of 10 unrelated young bulls. As you can see, the mobilization rate between the replicate one and the replicate two are highly uh, significantly uh, also correlated. Suggestion, the estimation of the ERVK transposition rate in the male germline is highly repeatable. So we are fortunately enough obtain a larger sperm stool from very same 10 bulls at age of nine years old we apply these methods to the animal. So this design allow us to test a possible age effects. So strikingly, the mobilization rate at young and old age are highly correlated, suggesting there's no age effects contrasting with the point limitation. So then we further apply these methods to 430 artificial insemination Belgian blue sires, and we obtained uh, more than 3,600 Delova ERVK insertion plus 300 polymorphic ERVKs. So as, as you can see, the read vary extensively. Uh, it's ranged between zero to one out of 25, and is averaged at one out of 147 gambits with a great agreement with the, with the rate we estimate from pedigree. So here, I think um, the mobilization rate is behave really like an intriguing molecular phenotype, which differ dramatically between individual, but it's stable within individual, even cross many years apart. So then we ask the question, if there are any genetic contribute to this variation or not? To answer the question, we performed the genome-wide association study with the phenotype of 10 from this 430 animal on the uh, 10 million genome-wide sleep plus the genotype of 300 ERVK insertions. So as you can see, 
we found a major peak in chromosome 19. If we zoom in this GWAS peak, it actually, the top slip, it's ERVK itself, and the ERVK allele increase the mobilization rate in an additive manner. So we perform a conditional GWAS, fit chromosome 19 genotype as a covariance, we identify additional seven peaks, and we zoom in each of the peaks. Actually, four out of the seven peaks have ERVK under nine in the vicinity, and they are high LD with the top sleep. And all the ERVK allele increase transposition rate additively. So from here, we could conclude it's a ERVK control their own mobilization rate. So the question is that, in the population, we captured around 300 polymorphic ERVK. Why this four, not others? So what's the, differ, uh, what's the difference between this four and with others? So we decided to assemble the uh, three, I mean, we, we, we decided to sequence all the 300 ERVK elements segregating in the 430 animals. As you can see, actually, the ERVK in cattle population comes from two flavors. So one, we call it coding competent, it's 10 KB long, because they can encode the GAC pro pro envelope. So a lot of type, it's like the one inserted in Apple B, it's 7 KB long, that defective. So if you do, do alignment between these two elements, the shear homology starts from 5 prime until a bit of GAC, and the shear, the homology in the end of the 3 prime, uh, go through a bit envelope. So interestingly, so four ERVK underlying the GWAS peak are all belongs to the coding competent ERVK. So then we're trying to characterize the relationship between the number of ERV alleles by group the 400 animals by their number of coding competent ERVK they carry. As you can see, each cattle carry between eight to 17 alleles of coding competent alleles. So the number of coding, com uh, coding competent ERVK they carry, it's positive correlated with the lower transportation rate. And the number of the um, competent ERVK explain uh, more than a quarter of the variation. So the effect's even stronger if repeat analyze using only the intact ERVK allele. And this effect's to not observed for defective ERVs. So from here, we could conclude that it's a number of competent ERVK alleles driving the mobilization rate. Then, so the role of competent ERV driving the transportation rate, it's a bit contrasting with the observation we observed before, because the disease causing insertion ApoB we saw, it's a defective. And the five de novo or captured in pedigree, it's also defective. So then we ask the question, can we characterize our de novo insertion directly to see if it's come from C element or D element? In other words, can we really identify the source of the uh, ERVK element? So fortunately, so our methods also sequenced of four peaks, what we call it, so it's four tags of the uh, ERVK sequence. So there are polymorphism between these four tags which allow us to assign this endogenous ERVK into different, what are called subcategories. So as you can see, for example, there are one category, it's fully uh, only contain C element, some category only contain D element, some category contain both C coding competent one and defective. So then we choose, sorry, we choose three animal and perform the uh, PCIP experiment, line times, six times, and 10 times, which allow capture like range from 100 to 200 de novo ERV insertion in each animal. And then we can use this four tags, categorize their endogenous ERVK based on a subcategory, as you can see the left bar in the bar plot. So if all the loci can contribute de novo uh, equally, so we should observe the same distribution for the de novo insertion. But as you can see, it's not the case. Some sub subcategory can contribute more than expected. 
So take it all together, as you can see, the defective ERVK can contribute substantially more de novo than expected. In other words, the D, the defective uh, ERVK can outperform in the de novo uh, mobilization rate. To summarize the whole thing in an oversimplified model, so a bull genome is carried from seven to 31 defe defective uh, ERVK alleles and eight to 19 uh, coding competent alleles. The more coding competent alleles you have, the higher transpiration rate you are. So both the defective and coding competent ERVK can transcribe the RNA, which can transport it to the cytoplasma. So only the coding competent one can encode the machinery which required for their mobilization. In one hand, the machinery interacts with the RNA from the, from the coding competent ERV form a viral-like viral particle integrated in the genome, generate a copy of uh, coding competent de novo ERVK element. On the other hand, the machinery can also interact with the RNA from defective ERVK, form a mosaic viral-like particle, and integrate in the genome, generate a copy of de novo defective ERVK. And the strength of the defective, the trans, is sometimes is higher than cis. So to conclude, first, we are showing that the ERVK are still mobile in cattle germline, both in male and female. The number of coding competent alleles directly influence their own de novo mobilization rate. ERVK mobilization rate is actually an now actionable phenotype. We can select for or against because we integrate all the 300 ERVK actually in the customer array. And the D actually elements can take over by hijacking the machinery of the coding competent elements. So our GWAS uh, results do not give us any evidence the emerging, about the emerging silence mechanism. So we hypothesis that probably the defective ERMA elements takes the lead. It's one of the mechanism or one of the self-regulation mechanism responsible for the demise of the ERVIC uh, activity. So thank you for, uh, for your attention. So I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Li Jin. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Uh, hi, James Penegas, University of Edinburgh. All right, so I was interested by the fact that you, you said there were 50 competent elements, but you only detected four in the GWAS. Is that something to do with the frequency of those ones in the population, or are they different in some way that makes them you know, more active or something? Yeah, I think it's major, it's because their frequency is higher okay. yeah, in the population. regarding the impact on breeding. So if you say, okay, mobile elements might be a driver of phenotypic diversity. So uh, would breeding companies then preferable select for sire lines which are highly variable, but uh, producers would like to have sires which are, have a less uh, mobilization rate. So how would this then transfer into potential application? So. That's a good question, I think. So in, in, in one hand, so they can generate genetic diversity, but on the other hand, I think the abnormal activity of ERVK maybe can cause some consequences. For example, it's low in mold organism, so the overactive ERV or transposer elements in general can affect the fertility of the animal. So we don't know if it's really, we should segregate it for or against, depends on the consequences, I think. So if no more questions, thank you very much. Thank both you. Both of you guys. <laughs>